Yo, Perry Shore from some retrogrades. The day after the real NBA season wraps up with the Boston Celtics beating my Dallas Mavericks 4-1, to I thought it would be funny to do a show on a spoof league, a spoof NBA league, and the player that is making big headlines everywhere from the spoof league, uh, Ms. Caitlin Clark. Now, I've ignored this Caitlin as, as a basketball aficionado. I've ignored this Caitlin Clark story for as long as I could. And I just thought it's um, now basically time to address it. The NBA season is over. Agenda 2030 is in full swing, and they are going to be pushing the WNBA League now that the NBA season is over. By the way, did Joe Missoula ever say anything based after the Celtics won? I, I, my team's getting beat 4-1, gentleman sweep in the NBA Finals, and I, and it was rough. And I was like, well, you know, Joe Mazzulla's a the, the coach of the Boston Celtics for non-sports ballers, is a very, very based Catholic guy that has said four or five amazing things publicly that went viral. You know, the, the royal family, the only royal family I care about is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. That's one of them. He has said that uh, when asked about, isn't this a big deal? How long has it been since two black coaches are coaching against each other in the NBA Finals? He said, I wonder how long it's been since two Christian coaches were coaching against each other in the final. And, and, and why does no one talk about that? He said some other really cool stuff. And he just says, well, all we need to do is have faith. But I didn't, I didn't hear anything. If anyone heard anything, um, check in the comments. I, I couldn't watch even the rest of the game last night. That was disgusting. But so here we are. So there's this WNBA player you've probably heard about. A lot of you guys are non-sports ballers. I'm a sports baller. But the non-sports um, baller take is appropriate with regard to Caitlin Clark, who they're trying to say is like the greatest whatever female basketball player ever. She just started. I think this is her first year. And it's, I, I don't know what team she plays for, the Indiana team in the NBA spoof league, which has been propped up by the NBA for 28 or 29 seasons. They haven't made a red cent. They haven't been above board any one of those 28 or 29 seasons, the WNBA. And so I just thought I would say, look, this is a fake product that is uh, parasitic upon the real NBA. They, they draw from the real NBA. The, uh, it's a fake product because, once again, basketball is, of course, a man's sport. There's no rule against a woman playing in the NBA. It's not like the NFL where women would be getting injured because they're, they're physically weaker. Women would not get injured if they played in the NBA. So if there was an, a woman who was a decent player, a, a highly decent player, that was a serious basketball player, she would be in the NBA. And there are some tall women that are taller than some of the guys in the NBA. There are women who, who they, they don't shoot a basketball. They shoot this orange and white thing that's smaller, a smaller ball than a basketball. But they shoot a basketball-like orb. And there are some allegedly great shooters. That's what they're trying to make of um, Caitlin Clark. And so, you know, if, if I, I come straight forward today... If there were a real breakthrough phenom female player, she'd be in the NBA. The reason that there isn't a phenom female player in the NBA is because women cannot compete at basketball, at the levels of professional basketball. So today's show is all about gender dysphoria because gender dysphoria is at the heart of this Caitlin Clark story. This, now, the, the, what, you've been, what they've been pushing in the media, and they're just pushing it hard to hype the WNBA season, which is now the NBA is going to make a real try at making a red cent for the first time in 29 years. So they're, they're using catty female drama 
Angel Reese, I guess, is another player saying Caitlin Clark gets special whistle, meaning she's getting call foul calls that she doesn't deserve. And all kinds of, um, I guess, black um, homo sapien WNBA players, according to, to one former WNBA player, 98% of the league, did you know this? 98% is Skittles homo sapien. Okay, so 98% of the league is Skittles homo sapien. And this former WNBA player who was named, uh, what, what, was, what was her name? I remember this story and no one covered it. It was very interesting. What was her name? Candace Wiggins. I was bullied for being straight in the 98% Skittles NBA. That's a Guardian article from 2017. Candace Wiggins said, I was bullied for being straight in a 98% Skittles WNBA. So she did, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, it appears that um, straight women will have to sort of dress up as not straight in order to, to not get bullied in the league. Allegedly, this is part of the, the Caitlin Clark story, is she's, she's um, I, I guess, one of the 2% of straights. <laughs> one of the 2% of straight ladies in this non-straight ladies league. And um, folks want to ask, well, well, why is this? Why, why, is she, why do they deserve to be bullied? No one deserves to be bullied. But, you know, Caitlin Clark, if she's a little bit better than the average girl, you know, attempted basketball player, then fine. Fine for her. But, I mean, that's, that's okay. But... I'm not, I don't want to say anyone should be bullied, but in a league comprised of 100% gender dysphorics, 98% of whom are actually sexually gender dysphoric, they, it's, it's, it's odd to be one of the 2% that's like, I'm straight, I have a husband, I'm, I'm Christian. I think Candace Wiggins is also a Christian. And I'm being bullied. Well, I don't, I mean, I, if I went and hung out in the Castro district, then I, you know, they probably wouldn't like me or my, my perspective or my ethos or my way of dressing or my way of thinking or my way of talking or my way of whistling or singing or anything like that. They wouldn't be into Timothy Gordon. So I'm going to unpack this a little bit more as the WNBA season tries to turn a buck for the first time in 29 years. This season, after the day after the, the NBA season, the real NBA season ended with the Boston Celtics beating the Dallas Mavericks 4-1. And, and the Boston Celtics coach is a very Catholic guy, Joe Mazzulla. I didn't, I was waiting. I said the one silver lining in this whole embarrassing defeat of the Mavericks by the Celtics will be maybe Joe Mazzulla says some cool stuff, some more cool stuff. He's already said some. And I didn't hear any yet. Uh, feel free to drop those in the comments if you see it. But now that that's done, because Agenda 2030 says get extra girls into sports. We've been doing it the last 10 to 15 years, but we want to do it extra. It has something to do with whatever Agenda 2030 is. Okay. So now I think for the first time in 29 years, they're going to try extra, extra hard to turn a buck in the WNBA. And I want to talk about how Caitlin Clark figures into all this. Conservatives are defending her. Liberals don't like her because she's white and I guess Christian and I guess straight. I, I'm not, I don't, I refuse to research this super well. She plays for the Indiana team. Indiana's kind of basketball state, right? She, I don't know what that team is called. I don't need to know what that team is called, but she plays for the Indiana team. She's a rookie. The season's been going for a little bit, preseason, then season. And um, she's a rookie in the league. They're pushing, they're making a big deal out of her when, yeah, I guess she came out of college. She's fresh out of college, right? I, I have no idea. I just know that she's a woman who plays sports. Yeah, she's a woman who plays sports, and she, she thinks she can do it um, professionally. 
Let me just double check because I just said very boldly something that I don't really know. I thought she was, I, I really thought she was in college until now. I mean, anything, anyone else, if this were, these were men's, you'd be like, wow, 31.6 points per game. Yeah, so she was in college um, until 23, 24. So she's a rookie because the WNBA season is um, summer. It's the summer season. Okay. That's, that's, how, that's how it rolls out. How about we make like a rule? If any woman, if women are only allowed to play sports if they can beat a dude. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then they can play. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. you. Well, I mean, because didn't, was she the one that they put, they propped up against Steph Curry in yes, the three-point contest? I think so. She, I thought it was another girl. Okay, so they had her shooting a non-basketball, a non-NBA basketball, a shorter, a smaller ball into a, a big rim, the same size rim against Steph Curry as if they were shooting the same thing, as if they were engaging in the same contest. It was her. It was her? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was another girl. So they, they're propping her up. This She went to a Catholic high school, by the way. They're propping her up as if she's the great woman's white hope and instead of just saying, look, this is gender dysphoric. The league is about gender dysphoria, as are all professional women's sporting leagues. Sporting leagues. <laughs> and they're propping her up as if the bullying by the gender dysphorics is out of bounds. No pun intended. It's not. It's a league by and for them. If I went and hung out in the Castro district, you would expect me to be cutting an unpopular figure. They, they would not like me. Caitlin Clark. Being pushed as a really exciting uh, woman's basketball prospect in the uh, spin-off NBA league called the WNBA. They're pushing the caddy drama where girls are complaining about her. I guess the black girls are being mean to her. The non-straight girls are being mean to her. And they're trying to push the WNBA smart, run by liberals. What? It's, it's just so... I'll turn up to my mic. Yeah. It's just so funny to me that the only thing interesting out of the WNBA is like the caddy female drama. Yeah. <laughs> The caddy it's female so girl. like, well, we can't sell it on their talent alone because they don't have talent. Even right. the best one in the league is boring to watch. So let's just make a reality show about this. Yeah, that not that what it is? It's been everywhere in the news. And here's how crafty the architects of the league, the, all the pro sports leagues are, right? They're not, they're not Christians, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> they would rather work with conservative they hate conservatives but they would rather work with conservatives on the following schematic than continue to have the league flounder 28 years they haven't turned a profit once when you hear WNBA players complaining about their low salaries they make more than a lot of you out there and they are not bringing in a buck uh, I mean, n like net profits. They deserve to be paid nothing. Negative. Given, given what they're actually offering. It should be an amateur league. Why this are they be paying it? anything? They're a loss on the league. They're boring to watch. They're not. Everyone knows they're not as good as the dudes who we want to pay to watch. It's just this is obvious. Why do we have to say it the obvious, right? Yeah, so you knew this was coming from me and Steph. But uh, what I'm saying is, look how clever the people that run the league are. They create the caddy drama and the caddy false dichotomy, um, false, false uh, opposition between, oh, conservatives root for Caitlin Clark because she's white and I guess straight and maybe Catholic. And liberals are with the woke, thespian uh, black girls who are populate most of the rest of the WNBA, who are being mean to her and saying she gets a special Caitlin Clark whistle and uh, doing other mean stuff. They, some of the caddy examples might be funny uh, for a moment, but I don't fall for it. I don't fall for it for one bit. I have friends in conservative sports media. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to call them out hard, but I have friends in conservative, uh, no, conservative sports media that do like updates on Caitlin Clark. 
And they're like, oh, man, look how crummy they're treating her. Look at this, dude. This is why women shouldn't be in sports. Another reason why. They can't handle it emotionally. It turns into a big cat fight. Right. And they're just playing with a ball. That's all they're doing. And they're, like, going on camera, like, spilling their drop. They're incapable of handling it like men, which is when men, when they play sports, they get up there and they do interviews. It's, like, respectable. Women, they're just being catty on on their their post-game interview. It's obvious. 